And the easiest way to do that is to drop down our chain link and we want to duplicate our chain link sweep. So if I hold control on my keyboard and drag this down, it's going to make a duplicate. Now I'm going to hide our original chain link because we don't need to see it. And I'm going to switch viewports and I'm going to go into the front viewport. I'm going to press S on my keyboard to actually zoom in. And what we need to do now is basically edit the rectangle. So I'm going to press C on my keyboard. And this is going to change the spline into an, an editable spline. And I'm going to select vertices, my selection tool. And basically just select these bottom uh, two um, vertices. And I'm going to right click and hit disconnect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these bottom ones and press delete. Make sure I did that wrong. The bottom one and press delete and delete again. And I think we did that wrong because we have to basically select these. But instead I'll just pick the line and it should work. At least I hope it works. No, it works. So let's go back. Um, if we can go back far enough. Okay, so we need to select all three of them. The reason we need to select all three of them and hit disconnect is because if we try to select this, it's going to select either that one or the top one, but we want to keep the top one. So it's easier to disconnect the bottom one and basically hit delete and it will delete the side ones for us. So now if we go to our perspective, we actually see we do have um, half of a, um, a link, which is what we want. So if I unhide this now, you will see that it is actually what we want, but we need to rotate it. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I mean, this is all basic rotation. Um, you know, hold shift to um, to rotate in increments of five degrees. So I'm going to intersect it with the ball chain, something like that. Just It doesn't really matter. Just anything, just as long as it's intersecting and it looks pretty cool. So there we go, we have our complete setup and now that we've done all the modeling part, let's actually start with the dynamics. So what I want to do is I want to organize this hierarchy. So the, the sphere is at the bottom and then the chain link, which we're going to call um, sphere. Um, didn't mean to press space there. Um, sphere. Um, connector so what we've got we've got the ball connected to the sphere connector and then the sphere connector is connected to the chain and the chain is connecting to the torus hook so it's just a hierarchy so I'm going to select all these and press alt J just to basically group these up um, and what we need to do now is rename this to um, finished chain link now that we've got our finished chain link, we need to basically select the null object and move this up because it is at world at, um, world center. We need to move it up like so. Doesn't really matter how much, just as long as you're not interacting with the floor that we're going to put in. So I'm going to go and create a plane, and this plane can be any size. I'm going to make it 2,000 by 2,000, and the segments are going to be one because we don't need um, any polygons on this apart from one. And I'm going to drag that down the bottom, rename this floor. There we go. So, what we need to do now is we need to select all these objects here. Go to right click and go to simulation tags and add collider body. Now, what this is going to do is going to add a collider body tag to all of the objects that we want to affect. Now, if you press play, nothing happens. The reason for this is because they collide objects. So now we need to change the ones that we want to be dynamic. So we want basically the ball, the ball chain, and the ball connector to actually be dynamic. So I'm going to click the sphere. I'm going to click the ball connector and chain link. Go to dynamics and turn the dynamics on. That's going to convert it into a rigid body tag. It's just the same as going right clicking and going to simulation rigid body. So if I press play now, a lot of things are going to go wrong. So let me turn off my display um, and press play. As you can see, the chain freaks out, the little ball freaks out, and it's just not working. 
Now, a lot of people can get frustrated with dynamics because they are quite annoying, especially when you don't understand some of the aspects of dynamics. So I'm going to press pause and I'm going to go back to the beginning and let's work on the sphere first. So the sphere is basically, we don't want it to be too bouncy. So we're going to go into the collision tag and we're also going to go to the bounce and let's reduce this to something like 10 but we want to increase the friction because it's going to be metal so something like 90 and this isn't really going to affect anything major it's just if things are interacting with each other the bounce does matter such as if I put the bounce on the floor up to something ridiculous like 500% and press play you see the the metal it really does bounce which isn't you know too realistic so if we put it up really something crazy you can see the ball does do something really weird <laughs> so as you can see you can have fun with this um, but of course I don't want any um, bounce on the floor really because um, the sphere itself will do the bouncing and I put the friction up to 80% I mean these numbers are specific they're just random numbers that I'm putting in um, obviously the higher percentage the more friction you're gonna have the less the less friction you're gonna have so the floor is complete the, this the ball is complete so let's go to the connector. So let's go back to the beginning and zoom into the connector. Now what we need to do is we need to reduce the bounce obviously on this one and increase the friction to 90. Now the most important thing is the shape. Now the shape determines um, what objects can actually interact with each other and which objects can't. Now if you look at this, um, this chain link and if you imagine that you wrap this chain link in cling film and you actually try and put your finger through the middle of it you're gonna obviously encounter some resistance and you know depending on how much cling film you have it, it could be impossible for you to just to poke your fin finger through it so it's stopping you from poking your finger through it and you could say the, the same if it was like an elastic band if you put your finger um, onto elastic band trying to push it through and you relax your finger then the elastic bands basically going to push your finger out um, I hope that made sense it's kinda hard to um, explain the way this works but basically because our chain link here is intersecting this chain link here it's basically saying I don't want you inside me get out <laughs> that's what she said <laughs> and so what we need to do is we need to change the shape of this object and the way we do that is we change this to moving mesh now what moving mesh does is it calculates convex objects such as objects with holes in them or objects that intersect and it's very important that you actually change this and we, ha we actually have to change it on the chain link as well so we're going to change this to moving mesh now when you actually enable these the um, the animation will be a lot slower in the viewport because it's calculating the dynamics in real time so as you're playing it's calculating them so as you can see it kind of freaks out there but it does hook on a little bit as you can see if we zoom in and it'll play again that was too zoomed in <laughs> so there you go it does stay on now the reason our chain link is acting as one individual object is simply because the individual elements it's off so it's saying this dynamic tag affect this chain link as a whole but we want to affect every single element in this which is made up of 10 links so we need to change it from off to all now if we press play you will see that it does actually stay connected to the bottom chain link as you can see but our chain link does literally fall apart now that is because of something I will talk about next but let's fix the torus first so because the torus is a collider object we want to change the shape to a static mesh because it's not moving we don't need to calculate any movement but we do still need to calculate the fact that it's got a hole in the middle and something is intersecting it so again I'm going to reduce this down to 10 and put this up to 90 and now if I press play we will see that it does kind of stay together but it does still snap now the reason it's snapping is because of this the number of steps calculated per frame is very low 
So it doesn't have enough time to calculate the precise um, dynamics before it's too late. Um, so if